Hello there, welcome to Mr Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr Paul. Nice to see you all here again, especially new visitors. Very, very warm welcome. Now today's recipe is for something that everybody I think loves. It's, uh, it's something that uh, somebody's eaten every, uh, at least some time in their life and um, not many people get it right I'm afraid. Now, I've eaten them out in restaurants, in friends houses uh, and in families homes and um, not very satisfied with a lot of them. Anyway it's pertinent now because it's nearly Christmas and people will be wanting to use them more than ever. It's for the crispy roast potato. No roast dinner is, uh, is, uh, is good without a roast potato and it's, they're very easy to make but a lot of people don't know how to do it. I've got one little secret that I'm going to tell you about that will guarantee your roast potatoes are better than anyone else's. Okay? It's a little secret that somebody told me many many years ago and I've used it all the time and I have to admit I've never seen it on television or on videos yet. It might be there but I haven't seen it. Uh, I know quite a few chefs, only a, 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 about two or three of them I know use this method of doing roast potatoes, the rest don't. So watch out for the little secret, okay? Let's do it. <music> roast potatoes. Now the potatoes I've got here, remember I'm in Spain. These may not be the potatoes you can buy where you are. Uh, in England I know the best potatoes for doing this particular dish is uh, King Edward's, <coughs> Mary's Piper, things like that, which are floury potatoes, nice for chips and things like that, so you get a nice crispy outside, soft fluffy inside. These I'm using here are called Agata. They're not my first choice in Spain. I couldn't get my first choice this week. My first choice is Mona Lisa, which are much more golden colour than these are. Mona Lisa are the best potatoes for doing this in Spain. Uh, in America they might be Yukon Gold or Russet or something like that. I don't know much about American potatoes. I have had a, a little scrape with them. But, uh, if, excuse the pun, but these are what I'm going to use and they are a floury potato used for either baking, roasting or chipping, things like that, nice and fluffy inside. So the first thing we've got to do of course is to peel the potatoes. We can't do without doing that. So we'll get the peel off there. So here we are. The last one. Now normally if I was peeling other vegetables, these peelings here would be put to one side and I'd use them in when I'm making stock. Do not use potato peelings in a stock, it will ruin the whole thing. Throw them away, okay, or put them on the compost heap, whatever you want to do with them. But certainly don't put them in the stock. Any other vegetable skins I use. So we'll put those to one side. Now we come to the actual cutting of the potatoes. <clears throat> what we need to remember here is they need to be all cut to about the same size. That means they'll cook at the same time. Okay, so we'll cut down like that. And then I'm going to cut them, I'll probably cut those in three. About the size of a golf ball or a ping pong ball or something like that. I don't like great big ugly things. In my, so I'm cutting them in half and then that one might go into two. It's not too big. There we are. All roughly the same size. In fact that rule of thumb is something you should do when you're cooking anything really, especially stir-frying Chinese food and things like that. Everything about the same size then it all cooks at the same time. So these are now going to go into my pot. We are. 
and I'm going to top those off with cold water. Now you need to just cover them with cold water and probably have about, I'll put a little bit more on top of that, sorry. Just about an inch above the top of the potatoes. And at this stage, I do not put any salt in this water. I'll put it on the stove. So there we are. I'm going to put that on a high heat now until it comes to the boil. Now we come to the little secret I was going to tell you about earlier. This is the little secret and it is bicarbonate of soda. Not baking powder, bicarbonate of soda. And I'm going to put in a level teaspoon of that into the water. Remember, no salt gone in at this stage, okay? I'm just going to cook them like that. Now, what the bicarbonate of soda does, it will soften the outside layer of the potato without you having to boil them to death. I've seen a lot of people tell you to boil potatoes until they're very, very soft before you start putting them in the oven. Uh, and they start, I've seen them falling apart. It's absolutely useless. This will soften the outside, and I'll show you when we rough them up afterwards, and it will give you the crispiest outside you've ever tasted. This is a secret that I haven't seen used in many, many years. I know one or two chefs that use it, but not everybody I know uses it. So you're privileged now. I'm going to bring that to the boil and then turn it down to a simmer. Now you can just see that starting to come to the boil there. Turn it down slightly, the heat, because we don't want it to rapidly boil and break up the potatoes. It just needs to be moving the top of the water like you can see that now. I'll just move a bit of the froth out of the way and then you can see it. There you are. That's how it needs to be. So I'm going to put the timer on now and that will go on for five to six minutes. I'm setting mine at six minutes, depending on the size you've got your potatoes. And as soon as they're ready, I'll be back. Okay, the potatoes are ready. Now I'm going to put them through a sieve just to get rid of the water. So here I've got my roasting tin and I'm going to use lard. You can use oil, you can use olive oil, you can use beef dripping, you can use goof fat, whatever you want, but lard is my choice. This is going in the oven now, which is set by the way at 220 centigrade. And while my potatoes are drying off, because I want as much moisture to come off those as I can, that will be getting hot. Uh, and uh, I'll be back as soon as that's all ready. I'm going to take the colander, put the lid on, like so, and I'm going to give them a shake. I don't want to do, shake them too much, I don't want to destroy them, but what I want to do is I want to, as you can see, rough up the edges of them. Can you see that? I think you can. Just rough up the edges. All those rough little bits there will be crispy and nice. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pick them out, excuse me, and put them on the cooling rack because I want these to dry off as much as I possibly can before I put them in the hot fat. I know this seems like a bit of a fiddle to what you're normally doing with your potatoes, but this can all be done the day before, up to the, whoops, 
up to this stage and then you just have to finish them off on Christmas Day in the oven. There we go. So before we get to the uh, fat that's ready to come out of the oven, I just want you to have a look at these beauties. Now can you see all those little crunchy bits that are going to form and that's all down to um, the, the baking soda, the bicarbonate of soda. It's, it's really done its work on the outside. So I'm going to get the fat out of the oven now and we'll get the potatoes in. This has been in about 10 minutes. In, uh, in, uh, in the oven. There we are. And the, don't just tip them in, please, whatever you do. You'll break them all up. Just gently, gent, oops, gently pop those in one at a time like that. There we go. We need to do is just turn them once. Just turn them over once, all of them. Just so that we've got some fat coating on the other side, that's all. I think. Now they're going to go back into the oven at 220 and they're going to remain there for about 45 to 50 minutes before we look at them again. 45 to 50 minutes. Okay, we're 40 minutes in now. So they're coming out. And I'm just going to give them a little turnover. 40 minutes in. Just make sure they're all nicely coated with the fat. Next, I'm going to put in there some little sprigs of thyme from the garden and a couple of sprigs of rosemary. So we want the, uh, about a half or three, half to three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, some grinds of black pepper. I like black pepper. Now that's going back in the oven now for another 15 minutes or so. Well, there they are, straight out of the oven. Uh, no doubt about how crispy they are. So we're going to pop those into the into the um, dish. Now I think all they need now. Oops. All they need now is a little more salt. I think just a little more salt and I think you'll agree those do look very very nice and I'm going to try and show you how crispy they are I think you can hear how crispy they are and inside lovely fluffy potato beautiful fluffy potatoes inside i'm just going to try one hmm absolutely delightful well that's it well, that's all I have time for today. If you haven't subscribed, please go underneath, press the red button, and the little bell icon appears. Then click that. YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, leave them underneath also. I do read every single one and try to answer as many as I possibly can. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends on social media. So, Mr. Paul saying bye for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye.